This week we're tackling another long overdue project here at the CMS HQ. I am going to digitize a bunch of old photos and documents and CDs and cassettes and sentimental items. It's giving me the opportunity to review each and every item that I no longer need around the house and it also allows me to create backup copies of the items which we do want and we can have access to at any time. Now, before we get cracking, you are gonna need a few things to make this project successful. First, you will need a scanner or a photo taking device, and you can just use a flatbed scanner like I am here, or you can use one of those specialty photo and document scanners. I don't have one, but I will link some down below in case you are interested. You will also need some sort of photo capturing equipment, so you can use a good old smartphone with a good photo taking app, or you can use a digital camera. You also need some sort of reliable storage solution, so something like an external hard drive that works with your computer, or you can use some cloud product like Dropbox or iCloud. Finally, make sure you have a shredder and appropriate recycling facilities handy, because of course, you're gonna to wanna to safely dispose of any of your items once you've digitized. Now that we've got all that set up, time to get digital. Documents. Start by asking yourself if you must have the original document once you have a digital copy available. Further, what documents can you safely get rid of, like old purchase and sale agreements, legal documents, or tax paperwork, which you no longer legally need to hold on to? Also, any instruction manuals are now mostly available on the internet, so these can safely go without even digitizing. Scan in your important documents, and the best part is that once documents are scanned in, they can often be saved as searchable PDF files. This makes it substantially easier to find a specific document you're looking for, and it also avoids pesky paper cuts. Use this as an opportunity to create smart folders and subfolders in your digital storage, which will also help reduce digital clutter and make things easier to find. So what I suggest is to do it by year and then by subheaders like 2012, taxes, travel, health, medical, vehicle, and then do the same thing for 2013 and so on. Once you have everything in digital format, of course, I recommend that you just shred all of the paper so that you stay on the safe side. Old photos. As mentioned last week, old photos are great, but the limitations of only having a hard copy are pretty obvious. So making digital copies of your favorite old photos is a great investment of time. Like we did with the documents, we're gonna go through each photo first and discard the mediocre ones and only scan in the ones that we really wanna keep or share. This is an important vetting process, so don't just go through and scan every photo that you have. Be a little bit discerning. Now, most newer scanners are accompanied with very interesting software, which makes the process not as hard or as time consuming as you might think, and might even have automated features which adjust, straighten, and even color correct your photos. This means your photos will actually end up looking better than the original. Talk about value add. If you don't have a scanner, you can just try taking a picture of a picture with a digital camera or a smartphone now, it might take some practice to get the lighting just right, but once you toggle around with it a bit, you'll manage to take pictures of old photos that will turn out great. Once all of your worthy photos are scanned and you've put aside those extra special photos which you will never part with, which I totally get by the way, you can dispose of the remainder by either passing them along to family or friends or straight up throwing them away. If you're a parent or a grandparent, this one's for you. A few smart friends of mine who take a bazillion photos of their kids create beautiful photo books each year online and then they get the books shipped to them. So this allows them to delete all of the photos from their phones and SD cards so that they can reduce digital photo clutter and keep the many great photos that they have taken in a nice book that they can use as a keepsake to show off. Music and movies. It's 2015, so let's face it, there is very little reason to be taking up storage space with your collection of 635 CDs from your favorite bands from high school. These days, it is much easier to store all of your music digitally and to have it available whenever you want, wherever you want. 
You might even decide that you want to get rid of this stuff altogether and embrace digital music programs like GrooveShark, Pandora, Spotify, Songza, and iTunes. Now my friends, there are a lot of legalities involved with this subject and a lawyer, Melissa Maker, is not. So please review your country's laws on digitizing music and movies. I will tell you right now though, a lot of people are very confused about this topic and it leaves a gaping gray area because if we are trying to declutter, we are giving away our content. And oftentimes, we want to make our own copies before we do that because, you know, we paid for it. But here's the rub. From what I understand, you can give away a copy of something like a CD or a DVD, so long as you don't retain a digital copy of it anymore. Just like photocopying a book and then giving it away or selling it would be illegal. So I'll leave the moral and legal decisions up to you and you can investigate on your own how you wish to handle digitizing this stuff. And I've got some links down below for you to check out on this very topic. If you have CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays that you no longer watch and have not digitized, you can do away with the product as you wish, donate them or sell them. If you have created that archived copy for yourself, well, that's where things get murky. I would love to tell you to donate them because disposing of them seems wasteful, and it is. However, I believe that is what the law would like for you to do. Now with that awkward topic out of the way, if you have old home movies or cassettes of you playing the piano, you can digitize these safely because hey, it's all your content. Create digital copies to store and provide a lifetime of embarrassment for your children. There are specialty products available to help you in case some of these are on some now defunct formats like VHS or camcorder tapes. Sentimental items. As discussed in last week's video, sentimental items are the toughest ones to part with but digitizing some of these items might be just what you need to let go of the physical item itself while saving the memories surrounding it. This artwork from my childhood takes up a lot of space, but it does indeed mean a lot to me. After sorting through it and picking out the pieces that I really want to keep, I'm going to take a photo of each piece that I am parting ways with and create a digital catalog or virtual art gallery of sorts, and all of my priceless pieces can be stored in there forever. Now that I have an archived copy, I can safely part ways with the majority of my art without parting ways from the memories. This can also be done for heirlooms, gifts, mementos, and greeting cards which are particularly special to you, but you feel that you want to part ways with the physical item. So what you can do, like we discussed last week, take a picture or scan these items in and create a digital catalog of special items that you can enjoy for years to come. Now that you have digital copies, you're going to have to find somewhere to store your documents and photos and you have two options available. You can save them locally to your computer or your device or even an external hard drive like these, meaning that if you want to access the files, you would have to do so by using the actual computer or device or plugging in your hard drive, or you can save them online or in the cloud, which makes your digitized files available to you anywhere at any time on virtually any device. There are a plethora of options available for cloud storage, and as always, I will link some options down below for you, along with some apps that you can use to digitize your stuff. Once the item has found its digital forever home, it is really up to you what you're going to do with the originals. Clearly, I am not going to throw away my marriage certificate or my truly cherished old photos, but it does give me the opportunity to really slim down the physical clutter in my home. This week's comment question is, what do you need to digitize? Is it a bunch of CDs? Is it a bunch of photos or documents? Let us know in the comments down below because I am very curious about your spring cleaning needs. Let me know what you're up to by finding me on Instagram and tagging me in your spring cleaning photos. You can also see what I'm up to. I'm at Melissa Maker. He is at the Chad Reynolds. We are at Clean My Space. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Welcome to the very end of this week's video. I have a couple of great recommendations for you to watch now. Over on the right side of the screen, you will see a video called Declutter Your Bedroom, which delivers some excellent tips and tricks on how to, you guessed it, declutter your bedroom. Also over there is a video called How to Get Your Spouse to Clean, which shares some helpful advice on creating reasonable and fair cleaning responsibilities in your home. Happy spring cleaning, and we'll see you soon.